So this is kind of what a lung wedge would look like. So I made this off of a cadaver lung and I obviously don't have the staple gun like you would have when you're doing this actual surgery, but this is pretty much what a lung wedge would look like after you remove that staple line. So when you receive a lung wedge, it'll be like this, except this whole thing will be kind of pinched closed and stapled off like this. But remember, to take your surgical margin, which is this, you would want to remove that staple line first. So this we're gonna treat as a lung wedge specimen as if we had just cut off this staple line. So the first thing you wanna do when you get this, so pretend it's still stapled here, you would um, examine the outer surface, so the pleural surface here, see if you can find anything abnormal, and if you do, you would note it. Um, you can see there's a little bit, maybe a potential bleb here. It might just be an artifact of fixation since this is from one of our cadavers, but another thing you wanna do is make sure to feel this. So when I'm feeling this, you probably can't appreciate this on the video, but here I can feel a little nodule. And when I'm feeling here, I can feel a nodule. So even if you're not really seeing that with the naked eye, you can feel it. So a lot of times my best advice for grossing is gonna be feel and trust that more than what you're seeing. And this is a good example of that. So here I can feel a nodule here and a nodule over here. So after you examine the pleural surface, um, you can take a picture of this to document it because once you cover it with ink, you're not really gonna be able to see that anymore. So you can go ahead and take a picture if you want. Um, and then we of course wanna measure it. So we're gonna measure this in 3D here. Um, so all of this, so there's 1D, 2D, and then 3D here. And then if you have your staple line on here, you'd wanna give a measurement of that staple line as well. So after you've examined it, measured it, um, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and ink it. So you can ink the whole outer surface of the pleural surface here one color if you want, or if it is for a tumor, um, you can just ink the pleural area external to that tumor. Now with this, you gotta kind of use your judgment because if you ink the whole thing, it might get a little bit messy um, because ink doesn't really stick to pleural the pleural surface that well. But on the other hand, if you only ink a little bit because you're not wanting to get messy or you don't want the ink to bleed everywhere and then you serially section it, what if you find another lesion and you didn't ink the pleura on the outside of that and so then you're gonna have to kind of go back and try to ink just the pleural surface once it has already been sectioned, which is gonna be a lot more difficult because the ink will most likely bleed into the underlying lung parenchyma. So, it kind of just depends what it's for. Like if this is just for a bleb or something, you ink is not necessarily going to be that important. So this is just going to be up to your judgment. But I'm going to go ahead and just ink the whole thing just so you can kind of see what it looks like. So we're going to ink the whole pleural surface one color. And then you would make sure that's dry, remove your staple line, and then you'll ink this a second color. So why do you think it's important to ink these two different colors? Like why can't you just cut off your staple line and then ink this black and all of this black? Well, think about how you're gonna section this. We're gonna section this like this, right? So if we have a lesion here or whatever the pathology is, you wanna section that lesion so you can see it in relation to the pleural surface, but also to that margin. So if you have this and this inked as the same color, you're not gonna be able to tell what's what. So we're gonna ink them two separate colors, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead, like I said, ink the whole thing, but you may need to adjust that depending on whatever pathology you have going on. So normally I like to use um, black and blue as my two go-to, but since this is a video, I feel like those can kind of start to look very similar. So I'm going to use blue and red just because they look a little bit more different, at least from a camera point of view. So here, you're gonna notice that I am struggling a little bit getting the ink to just stay on the pleural surface. And this is why I usually recommend to ink all of this before you move that remove that staple line and that will help because this will tend to bleed since this is a very spongy tissue. And so if you put all of this ink on while that staple line is still there, it's gonna be way less likely to bleed into your surgical margin. So you can see I already have some bleeding right there. I was probably a little bit too generous right there. But if you have that staple line on, that's gonna help with that. So I'm gonna do this side. I'm gonna put our vinegar on. And this blue ink that I have here, this is really runny ink. So um, if you have different ink colors and they tend to be different consistencies, which in my experience, some of them are, um, try to pick one that's not very runny because you can see this one is kind of bleeding a lot. But I'm kind of just drying it here and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my vinegar on. 
and blot it dry again. And typically um, ink is not gonna stick very well to the plural surface at all. So you may need to go back and re-ink it a little bit a second time to get it to be a full you know, coverage on there. Okay. Alrighty, now I'm gonna do the other side. So I'm still just inking that plural surface here, okay? I haven't gotten to the margin yet, and that's why this is all still blue. Alrighty, I'm gonna dry it a little bit just so it doesn't bleed everywhere where I put that vinegar on. And then use our mordant. In this case, we just use regular vinegar. That's gonna help it stick. And then you would definitely wanna make sure this is completely dry before we're gonna start putting our second color ink on because they're way more likely to kind of blur together, blend together, or seep into the deeper tissue if they're still wet. So you can blot it dry and then you can even just like let it sit out for a few minutes and let it dry if you want. And then once it's fully dry, we're gonna go ahead and ink, oops, I missed a spot. This is important, make sure your inks always touch all the way around. You don't wanna see any of that surface not covered. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink the surgical margin. So remember, if you received this specimen, you would have received it with all of this closed with a staple line. So this is why the plural surface is like an anatomic margin. It is definitely something that you need to document because if you have a tumor and it's invading into the pleura, that's gonna upstage that, but it's not a true surgical margin. The only true surgical margin on here is right here where that surgeon had to cut, right? So this is our surgical resection margin. And again, that would have been closed with that staple line. So we have cut off the staple line and now you're gonna ink this whole surface a second color. And this surface should look different, right? Because this is not covered by pleura because they've cut into the lung here. So you should, this is the cut surface of the lung. You can see it's spongy. You can see some vessels in there. That is what the inside of the lung looks like. So that's how you can tell the difference here. So like I said, I wouldn't normally use red for this, but I'm gonna do it just for the sake of the video so that you can clearly see the difference between the colors. I think it will help. And actually, before I move on to the red, I wanna show you another trick. So you can use a biopsy sponge and put your ink on the biopsy sponge and then blot it on. But I only use that if it's a bigger surface. So like if you have a big specimen that you need to ink, I mean, imagine using one of these to get ink all over where you need to get it. It could take a long time. So I really like to use those biopsy sponges for bigger surfaces. So I could have used that for that plural surface if I wanted, but if you are worried about bleeding that ink or if you need to get it on a very specific area, you should be using um, something like this, like a swab. So here, again, we're just gonna lightly go and this is where that blue bled. So we're just gonna lightly put on our red and you wanna get it so that your inks are touching but not overlapping, that's ideal. So you don't wanna see any leftover lung tissue that's not covered by ink, but you also don't wanna have a ton of overlap. And again, here where it bled, if you had left on that staple line, that would really help prevent that. So that's why I recommend inking before you remove that staple line. If it's a case that you need to ink the pleura. Like I said, if it's like a blab or something, you may not need to ink the pleura. It's gonna be a case-by-case -case basis. So it looks like this is pretty covered and you'll notice when you do this that the ink is gonna stick a lot better to the cut surface of the lung than it does that pleural surface. And so why is it doing that? Well, remember the pleura is gonna be uh, made up of a bunch of mesothelial cells. So it's got a mesothelial lining and those are gonna be slippery. And so the ink just isn't gonna adhere to those as well. Just like if you were inking like the serosa on the outside of a bowel, it's not gonna stick as well because it's a slippery surface. Those mesothelial cells are slippery. So we'll now put our vinegar on and blot it dry and then let it sit out for a few minutes to let it fully dry. And then we're gonna go ahead and section this.
So here, notice that the more I um, blot this, the more ink is coming off the pleural surface, but look how well it's stuck here to the um, lung parenchyma, the surgical margin here. So just take note of that. And once you have it totally dry, then we're gonna go ahead and cut into it. Okay, so notice that I've changed gloves. If you get ink on your gloves, you definitely wanna switch them out so that once you start touching everything, you're not gonna be spreading ink where it shouldn't be. So here I have dried this and let it sit out for just a few minutes. Um, it's still a little bit wet. Um, so you might wanna let it dry fully, but as long as it's enough that you're not gonna start bleeding ink everywhere, you should be okay. So we've already measured it in three dimensions. We've described the external surface. We've removed our staple line. We inked our margins, and now you're gonna section it. So you wouldn't wanna section it this way typically because then you're losing that relationship of whatever that pathology is to that surgical margin, and you wanna see that. So typically with wedges, you're gonna serially section it this way, so perpendicular to that surgical margin. And long can be kind of hard to cut if it is fresh. So that's why a lot of times it's much easier if you just let these fix for a little while before you start to gross them. All right, so here, this is now the fully serially sectioned lung wedge. So I want to show you what these sections actually look like because this grossing is not just cutting up tissue. Grossing is cutting a tissue in a way that will best demonstrate the pathology and all of the pertinent structures. So in this case, we wanna see whatever the pathology is in relation to that pleural surface and in relation to that surgical margin, which is why we ink them two different colors and why we cut it this way. So as we're looking at this, once you get it sectioned, you wanna examine the cut surface and see if you can find anything abnormal. So for each section, it's gonna look something like this, where the outer surface, see the blue, that is that pleural surface. And then the cut surface on both sides is just the lung parenchyma. And then here, that was where the staple line was, so that's the surgical margin. So each section should be like this. Now look how thick this is. This is gonna be probably too thick to fit in a cassette, so you may wanna section these down. And by may, I mean you should section these down, um, kind of thin them out before you put them in a cassette. Now, lung can be kind of tricky to get really thin on your first cut, but especially if you have teeth forceps. I need some non-teeth forceps in this lab. But if you have their like paddle forceps, these, I don't have them on me right now, but they're awesome. It's like essentially little paddles that you can hold a piece of tissue like this. And then as you're holding it, you can use your scalpel blade to thin this out. And so you could bisect this to make two beautiful sections. But on your first go around, a lot of times you're gonna have these thick sections because you don't wanna make all these super thin sections right off the bat, because think if you find a lesion in here, you're gonna have to reapproximate that to measure it, right? So as you're sectioning, if you find anything, you should be measuring it as you go. And then once you get them all sectioned, you should you know, double check them to see if you can find anything. So on here, remember we felt a couple little nodules. So we definitely wanna to try to find those if we can. So here I've examined all of the cut surfaces and I really don't see any very obvious lesion. And so then I'm like, well, I felt lesions when I was palpating, what could this be? So this is when, when I tell you that feeling is just as important, if not more important than seeing, this is the reason. So here, what I was feeling, it's actually little blood clots in the vessels here. So that's not necessarily anything that you need to, you know, measure for staging purposes, obviously, if it's just blood. So here, same thing. And this is probably just because this is from a fixed um, donor. So if you serially section, you don't see anything, you can submit representatives. But since we're doing this to learn how to gross as if there was a tumor or something, I'm gonna make kind of a fake tumor here so that we can practice doing our measurements. So here, I'm just gonna put a little dot of red ink and pretend that this is tumor here. And I'm purposely gonna put it next to that blue ink here, okay? So if this is our tumor, I mean, obviously it would be three-dimensional. It wouldn't just be a little piece of ink. So you would first wanna measure it in three dimensions, right? And describe it. So, you know, a lung tumor is not typically gonna be red like this, but in this case, you could call it, you know, a soft, ovoid, um, red lesion but typically it's gonna be tumor. And so let's say if it's um, adenocarcinoma, for example, we would say that it's, um, you know, white tan, homogenous with ill-defined borders or something along those lines, whatever it looks like. That's like a stereotypical description of adenocarcinoma, but of course it varies depending on the case. So 
you would first measure it and describe it. So here we'll measure this lesion in 3D. So we'll do one dimension, two dimension, and then that third dimension would be the thickness, but obviously this is just ink. So once you get those three dimensions, are you done? No, you wanna note its relationship to the pertinent structures. So here, this is abutting the inked pleural surface. So in this case, you would say that it's abutting it. And on this side, it's about 0.2, centimeters away. But remember when you're measuring lesions, you want to measure the closest. So while it's not abutting on this side, it's abutting here. So the measurement you want to take to the pleural surface is the closest. So you would say, you know, the lesion measures blah, blah, blah centimeters, three dimensions, and it focally abuts the pleural surface and it comes within 0.6 centimeters of the surgical resection margin. So you've measured it to the pleura, you've measured it to the margin, and then you would wanna go ahead and submit your sections, right? Um, so you, at minimum, need to submit tumor in relation to surgical margin and tumor in relation to pleura. And you wanna get, if this is you know, a four centimeter tumor, generally you should get at least four sections per centimeters and greatest dimension of that tumor. So if it's a four centimeter tumor, you wanna at least get four sections that are representative of the whole lesion. But since this one's fairly small, you can pretty much just submit this lesion entirely. Um, so you wanna get lesion in relation to uninvolved lung as well, which we can get here. And you also wanna submit some other uninvolved lung. And if you found any other abnormalities, you would submit those as well. So in this case, I would take this, and if I had my paddle forceps, I would put it on its side, hold it here, and trim it. So overall, uh, in summary, you would submit lesion to margin, lesion to pleura, lesion to uninvolved, and then any additional representatives of um, any other pathology you find. And that's about it for a lung wedge.